Good afternoon. My name is John Lershider. I'm both a patient and a follower of Dr. Brewer's YouTube channel. Uh, Dr. Brewer asked me if I would do a short video on how to use 23andMe. Uh, it seems that most people are excited about understanding their genome and once they get the raw data sent to them from 23andMe, they're more than overwhelmed and at a loss for how to use it to their advantage. So what I want to do for a few minutes is talk briefly about 23andMe. Uh, what is it? Why we would want to use it? And how can we use it to our advantage? So a few notes. Um, basically, 23andMe was a service that was developed back in 2008. It is a direct-to-consumer genome testing company. Uh, why they did it? They wanted to help people understand their potential predispositions to certain physical traits and diseases. Uh, started out a little slow back around 2012, 2013. Uh, people were really getting into wanting to know the root causes of certain diseases that doctors basically could not explain. Uh, it's a reasonable cost, $99. Uh, what 23andMe offers is basically a service where they send you uninterpreted raw data. Uh, that's where the problem begins. How to use this raw data to your advantage. The FDA prohibits 23andMe from providing interpretation of this raw data. So customers are pretty much left out on their own on how to do this. Going to 23andMe.com, uh, it's a great website, lots of good information. What you'll find is uh, pretty easy. Uh, it's just like ordering anything off Amazon. You basically go, you put in a little bit of personal information, your credit card company, um, what you get about a week or two later is you get a kit and we'll talk about what's in the kit. First of all, you basically, like I tried to describe, you go on their website, you order your kit, you get it, you collect a saliva sample, mail it back to them, and short time after that, you'll get an email with a zip file attached and within the zip file is a text file and within the text file there is a little over 600,000 SNPs otherwise called SNPs and these SNPs we'll talk a little bit about what they are and what to do with them when you learn what your data is. So short time after you order maybe a week later what you'll find is you'll receive a kit in the mail Kit comes, you have a nice little box over here, uh, specimen bag, instructions, and a saliva collection tube. All pretty straightforward. Um, they give you easy to instructions. The test takes all of five minutes. You do it in the comfort of your home. You mail it back, and then you wait. And sometimes you wait a month, sometimes a little bit longer. I don't know. I did mine in 2013, so I can't say today how long this takes. Uh, people need to think about a few things when they try to interpret their raw data. Um, and they have to understand that this is not a perfect science. Um, these are, I've done interpretations for roughly 40 people. They, um, many times jump to the wrong conclusions when they receive their data. So I always try to preface it by letting them know that we all have mutations. Uh, there is nobody in this world who doesn't have a genetic mutation along the way. Uh, these are predispositions to many times certain physical traits uh, such as height, um, hair color, um, sensitivities to certain chemicals, um, susceptibility to certain diseases. 
Uh, we can't change our genetic code. It is what it is. We're born with it. We can thank our parents for whatever it is that we get. Um, it's not a complete science. It's very young. Uh, the genome is evolving rapidly uh, in the interpretation. There's less than a thousand genes that are well studied of, out of approximately 19,000 genes. Um, a couple of caveats, just because people have a mutation does not guarantee at all that they will ever come down with a certain disease state. Not all genes express themselves. Best example I can think of is Angelina Jolie, very susceptible to the BRCA1 gene, cancer gene, um, ran in her family. She was definitely positive for it um, in a preemptive action, she went out and had a double mastectomy because she was pretty convinced she was going to get this. That's an extreme case. Um, I myself, you know, men have the BRCA1 BRCA gene as well. I'm homozygous for it. Uh, I'm susceptible. I, my likelihood is higher that I will have prostate cancer at some time. I'm not running out and getting my prostate removed. Um, there are certain genes that, um, if you have the mutation, it doesn't guarantee you won't have that uh, physical disease or trait. Um, knowing certain mutations have very little value whatsoever. They basically are, you know, there's a gene for everything. Uh, how much earwax you produce, uh, how you taste certain foods and what they taste like. Um, sensitivity to light. And I will say one thing for sure, there are a lot of companies that jumped into the market that will take your raw data. Uh, they do an interpretation of it. Uh, many of them do or not have any credentials. Um, when you get their data, it, many people jump to wrong conclusions. So um, buyer beware. Uh, what does 23andMe look for? They basically examine your DNA. Um, your DNA, in a, the short version, uh, is a dual strand uh, sugar phosphate backbone, the spiral ribbons here. And then they look for more than anything, they look here for the um, base pairs of nucleotides. And in nature, these colorful little there's four different nucleotides. The base pairs connect in a certain pattern. And if the pattern doesn't basically match what's in nature, which is the normal way of building your DNA, uh, they're considered abnormal and people can have certain traits. So these nucleotides, according to 23andMe, there's basically a little bit over 600,000 possible combinations. So that's a lot of data. And that's where people tend to get this data and sometimes regret that they spent that money. So when you receive your email weeks later from 23andMe, you open it up, uh, you open up your text file. Here's what it tends to look like. Uh, it opens in either a Mac or a PC opens up in what's called Notepad, which is a very simple form of a software that will open up this package. It'll show you over here what the uh, certain SNPs are. It generally begins with the letters RS and then a long number. But there's no indication that what these mean. So you have to like do some research on your own the reason I chose to do my own was that I didn't trust anybody on these outside services that run anywhere from being free up to $30. Very reasonable. You can, the few of them you can get some really good information, but a lot of them you can't. So <clears throat> for sake of example, Dr. Brewer did one recently, a video, I think it was this week. It was on factor five leaving. Uh, clotting factor. It was a great thing to know for uh, people with 
potential clotting disabilities. So I thought I might take one here. Another great one to know is uh, our apolipoprotein A genetics. Uh, ApoE, as it's called. What is ApoE? It's a lipoprotein, basically. Its function is to carry very low density lipoproteins out of the bloodstream. If that certain SMP for any one of these potential possibilities over here, if they're abnormal, people can result in having abnormal lipids, very high triglycerides, potentially dangerous. So how do you use this to find out what your APOE status is? You basically go back into Notepad. Your computer has a toolbar, of course, up along the top of your screen. You go into Edit. You scroll down to the function Find. Come over here to Find. And what you get is a search bar up at the top. Very similar for a PC or a Mac. You type in the SMP number. In this case, the SNP is 429358. And this just happens to be my uh, example of what my results are. We'll use that. Um, when you come down here, it will, and you hit enter, it'll actually highlight and search through the 600,000 plus possibilities and tell you over here that I'm TT. So, if we go back to our Snippedia and we come down here to APOE33 and find TT, the LL pairing of the two base pairs TT tells me that I'm APOE33. Pretty good thing to have. The reason I selected this one to show is um, Seems you can't turn around these days without somebody telling you the benefits of a low carb, high fat diet. The problem if you have abnormal APOE status, you won't be able to remove these lipoproteins out of your bloodstream. You basically, your very low density lipoprotein, uh, you may be more susceptible to heart disease. So these are good to know. Um, this is just one example. Uh, there are many useful SMP SNPs that are useful to know as far as preventing heart disease, cancer, diabetes. Um, we can do more of these. If you like this sort of thing, kind of do it yourself. Comment below. Um, I'll reply to them. We can keep the conversation going. Uh, most of all, if you like Dr. Brewer's videos, subscribe to them, share them with other people. And um, I hope this helps. And if you have any questions, again, just post them below and we'll comment back. Thank you.